Welcome back to the resupply with me, Guy Next Door. And me, soon to be Fireball DK! Bringing you the last podcast for this year's 2019 Laser Force Space Marines 5 International Tournament. Um, what a trip it's been, it's, Steve. It's been a pretty good week, man. I gotta say, I've, um, I've actually enjoyed the majority of the week. Um, I don't know about you. Have you had a good time? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean... Didn't come quite as high in the bracket as I would have liked, but not as low as I feared that we might at yeah. a couple of points in the tournament. And overall, I think things went really smoothly. It was a mostly drama-free week yeah. uh, relative to a lot of tournaments. There was not a lot of angst and recriminations. And I honestly cannot remember a set of finals matches or a finals bracket in any last four tournament I've been to that was this competitive and this close. It was it was really good actually. Like we'll, we'll get into the standings in a second, but um uh, yeah, just I would I would second the um the drama free, you know, part of the Lays Force. Um this year. Like there was there was a couple of small things and like a couple of injuries and a couple of hospital visits. But for the most part, nobody raged out at anyone in a big bad way. Yeah. Um, there wasn't too much sulking going on. Like the tournament felt really positive. It was really, really good. Uh, good to see. Yeah, I think probably some of that had to do with the uh, new penalty system that we're using, which probably we'll do a, a deep dive after the tournament is completed mm. and do kind of a review on that because I would be interested to hear other people's thoughts on it. Yeah. But. If nothing else, I can say that it did seem to solve the problem of long ref discussions and arguments that spilled out into the lobby. So whatever other its flaws may have been, that was a definite advantage. And for the for the penalties that did get called, for the most part, people just let them go as expected, you know, yeah. because they didn't really mean anything. You know, it was it, it, it just you know people didn't care after they knew what they had done. Um, there was only a couple of people that actually had multiple offenses, and there's probably, again, we'll, we'll get more into it later, but there's probably got to be some sort of discussion around what happens, you know, um, from a repeat offenders kind of standpoint, how we how we better track that and, and um, you know, deal with those. Yeah, but given this was its trial run at a Nats, and it really was just a trial run that we weren't 100% sure was going to work well, mm. I think, by and large, uh, it needs some fine-tuning. It doesn't need to be wholesale revised. Yeah, I think so. I'd I'd probably agree with that. Um, Before we go any further in the pod, I want to give a massive shout-out to Jesse and Kevin and all the team at Revolution Laser Tag. Um, Absolutely. And let's throw uh, Beans and Sanch in there, too, because they did a ton of work this week. Mad shout-out to Russell as well for sorting all the stats out, as usual. He is our hero. Um, But, yeah, thank thank you to to Revolution for hosting, um, you know, for showing us a good time, um, for keeping games more or less on schedule, um, doing their best to, you know, set up things during the day and you know our, our midweek shenanigans which um cost us a podcast but whatever um <laughs> <laughs> worth it uh, but that there's pictures was... online you guys can enjoy that <laughs> everybody who cared was there that... and if you weren't here you didn't get to participate so fuck y'all yeah that was it was a pretty good night actually um i uh, yeah it's I, I preached about it before it's one of the best things about laser force um you know s- tournament is the social aspect of it. So. Yeah, it was definitely one of the best midweek hangs I think I've ever been to mm. at a Laser Force tournament, especially since this one wasn't like at the Caravan Park in <laughs> Brisbane or something like that. Yeah, or like, yeah, we actually went out as a crew and did something. I know that some people were not super stoked on the food or the service at the place. But. Yeah, the food was not great, and um, not everybody was as much into the drinking as some people. Steve, yeah. you bloody alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Man, my uh, my doctor recommended me against getting on the on the horse. So yeah, unfortunately, that was a uh, sober Steve's night. Yeah, it's but a bullshit. The- <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, everybody still had a, a relatively good time at that. Um, I know I did. I think most other people are aware that I did. <laughs> <laughs> you're on a you're, you're on good form, man. <laughs> it's pretty good. Well, we'll see what happens in uh, the next two hours here once we arrive at Dave and Buster's. Yeah, so we're uh, we're just uh, after this podcast, we're going straight out to dinner. 
Um, and yeah, it might be a repeat of what happened, although I would imagine even more so seeing as uh, people are celebrating um, and we don't have to play Vaser Force tomorrow. So Yeah, absolutely. And um, I lost my train of thought there. It's a little, it's been a long day, you already, you already mostly, couple, right? <laughs> mostly of refing. It's been a long day. So my brain might be a little bit fried, but yeah, yeah people are going to be celebrating slash hopefully not drinking their sorrows away. Hopefully nobody's too disappointed mm. about the, the result of the tournament. But I guess without further ado, we, we ought to get to that. But we, we, won't, we won't have the, we won't have the uh, actual like individual awards or anything because that will be announced at dinner tonight. Yep. Go give your shout out. One more shout out. I want to do a massive shout out to Morange and also a, a side shout out uh, to Wolfman for doing the live cast. I.e. our that. replacements because they're better than us. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, we, we've got the faces for radio, so you know, they <laughs> stepped in for the uh, visual part of it. But um, their announcing was, was pretty on point, especially Scott. He battled through having no voice. So um, thanks, bro. Appreciate it, it. It was truly a wonder to behold. And I had the pleasure this morning over breakfast and coffee of rewatching the live stream from yesterday when he and, and when Morgan and Wolfman were calling our match against St. George, which was a match for the ages. And just watching it and hearing them call it, I was still on the edge of my seat. I played in the damn game. It was more stressful watching that. I thought for sure we were going to lose. Yeah. It's um, it's definitely something that I, I'm super keen to have going forward because it, it definitely added a whole new dimension to how we enjoy our game. And I think it hopefully um, you know, let some of the people outside of the tournament enjoy it and, and get a get at least a taste of the atmosphere of what Nats brings you. Um, yeah, and there were there was a few people that, you know, uh, from our side of the world that were up in the wee hours of the morning um, enjoying the stream. So That's amazing. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really glad that we could share this with a wider community because I know not everybody could be here for this tournament, much as I would really love to see everybody. There were a lot of people that I missed this year, but hopefully you could at least be with us in spirit through these uh, podcasts and broadcasts. So we'll... Um, we'll for sure have it running in Auckland next year um we'll find a way to fine tune it so it looks a little nicer um and yeah yeah but I think I think it's definitely a, an awesome addition it'll be on ESPN 8 the Ocho the Ocho <laughs> um all right so we'll probably we'll, we'll get into the standings and um you know some highlights from the day um do you want to kick us off yeah so the the first match of the day I might want to say matches of the day, was <laughs> Auckland versus Detroit B, which Detroit B did handle business, beat Auckland as, I'm sure they were disappointed, but as kind of anticipated yeah. uh, by 6-0, but really kind of more like 12-0 because you guys had to have two different replays. Look, to be fair, we uh, I felt that we had the first game. We, we were on top in the first game. Um, I was like four grand with no bases, um, well clear of anyone else in the arena. So I was having probably one of my better games of the tournament. Well, tell your players not to bash each other on the head. Then. Well, yeah. So then, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Mr. Doom gave himself a head wound at the, uh, um, uh, behest of Morange. Can um, we go one year without teams giving their own teammates a head injury? I, I'm just glad he wasn't concussed. He was good to go, but yeah, because he, he basically said, "Look, I would have carried on, except the blood was blinding me." So um, he was cut open pretty good. Uh, but yeah, after we, uh, after their rude awakening, I think they were like, "Oh shit, okay, let's go, let's take care of business," and they did. They um, uh, they beat us handily in the. Next, oh no! Actually, in the next game there was some drama. Um, I got killed out on a chase again. There was some controversy over that. The refs had to discuss for a little while whether or not a that it had been your last life that had been taken for the the chase, yeah. and b whether your resupply was around the corner yeah. that you were proceeding down. Yeah. Because I I will admit as a neutral observer prior to the information introduced that your resupply was around the corner yeah my initial vote was actually going to be not to replay it because my feeling was is that it really sucks to get chased for for your last life it's (laughs) it's horrible but at the same time it's like you've put you've put yourself yeah shit happens and you've put yourself in the position of being on one life yeah but when the detail was added confirmed by multiple refs that your resup was right there that really does change the game and you know it was going to happen you were going to get more lives the game would have gone on so 
by a vote of I think like seven to one. It was almost one. unanimous. It was yeah. almost unanimous. We decided to to replay the the game, and um, yeah, there wasn't too much point in doing it either because in. Uh, Sack B got the angry pants on and um, smashed Detroit B. Detroit B. Oh, sorry. What did I say? You said Sack B. I have a fucking all week with this bullshit. (laughs) Too many B teams. Yeah, too many B teams. Um, Yeah, the the boys took care of business as they they should have and um, sent us into the loser bracket. You just wanted to play more laser tag. Pretty much. I missed the whole day, so. Yeah. I I clawed some of those games back. (laughs) Yeah, that that, that does kind of suck, but. Good job, Detroit B. They had been upset to get tossed into the losers bracket, but mm. boy, what a run they had after oh, that! Yeah, but we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, second match of the day was the Loveland Lightning versus St. George. So St. George also had, of course, been upset mm. by my team, Sac A, the night before on that epic fifty-nine point difference Crazy. match. That That's came in crazy. one of the craziest experiences of my life. That will be one of my truly enduring memories from this trip. And that was another thing that St. George, uh, they handled Loveland, but Loveland had a really good go of it in both Mm. games. Although St. George did win 6-0, both games were pretty close, and Loveland's style just really had St. George confused and not really sure how to operate Mm. on a number of occasions. Like we've been going over all week, so much of this had to do with, with how styles matched up with one another just because you did well against one team that was fairly comparable to you in skill level didn't necessarily mean that you would do well against another even if the team that you had done well against had managed to beat them Mm. there didn't seem to be a lot of well a is better than b so and b is better than c therefore a must be better than c yeah a lot of that just went in a big circle Mm. so loveland did get sent out of the losers bracket and end up taking a seventh in the tournament I really hope that they're not going to be too discouraged after this because this was by far the best tournament I had seen Loveland play mm. pretty much any time. And my honest feeling is that the teams that came third through seventh were really only razor thin margins in skill level and, and ability between them. Any one of those teams could have got unlucky in a match and ended up in the loser's bracket or ended up out as a result. Yeah. So great job to the Loveland guys. I have... A lot of respect, especially for the way that, for the most part, throughout the week, they conducted themselves. A lot more kind of positive attitudes going through things. I know they were disappointed to finish where they did, but please keep your heads up, guys. The future is getting brighter for you. You you won a good number of matches this week, and you were really competitive with a lot of those other kind of mid-tier teams. Yeah, keep your leadership core intact because, you know, a lot of the newer players coming through will look to you guys for, for... guidance i guess going forward so if you can keep you know if you can keep your your attitude where it should be i think you guys will you guys will be all right and if you're coming down to auckland next year ooh, i think you might have a bit of fun in our maze <laughs> yeah that that one might actually apply some of the lessons from loveland unlike detroit as you so <laughs> kindly reminded me on another podcast so um, auckland finished eighth loveland finished in seventh mm. i guess i mean you guys basically tied for seven since he went out at the same time but i think i think on standings like they, but yeah on, yeah on standings they had they, they had, had more seven, points yeah 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 so uh after that um then we got to move up to to the winner's bracket mm. where we had the the two teams that won upsets and the first one we had detroit a against sewer Q's, <laughs> our, our old friends there and again detroit a won the matches won the the game's comfortably mm. but it wasn't like they totally smashed no Syracuse I mean they were tough they were running their kind of what I suspected their finals lineup would be yeah they moved beans back to commander he was definitely moving faster way freer way freer and mm. faster than expected to the point where I was uh thinking that maybe there was a little Paul Pierce shenanigans there of uh <laughs> maybe overplaying his injury the other day but I'm, I'm just glad to see that beans was up and moving although he, he did get a little bit stiffer the as the booze. day went on <laughs> definitely the booze helped him out on uh, Wednesday night I'm yeah him up absolutely bit. absolutely yeah. <laughs> alcohol great solution to all of life's problems <laughs> Um, that's not official advice, by the way. Do not heed that. <laughs> yeah, this is the reason why I do not condone excessive drinking. Uh, no. We wow. do occasionally practice it, but we don't condone it. <laughs> um, so after that, we moved us into uh, the other winner's bracket game. Um, it was Brisbane versus your team, Sack A. Yeah, and the, the first game of that match, we felt fairly comfortable Obviously, I'm not going to outpace Rusty at Nukes. We continued using our new lineup of Mia Commander and Odin's Fist at Heavy. Mm. 
Um, it was pretty strong. It was pretty strong. I think it. I, I almost wish we would have switched to it earlier in the week. Um, it was just more a matter of it felt more comfortable at the time with me kind of managing things on the back end, playing heavy. But because of how those positions play in this maze, the reverse combo seemed to be a little bit more effective. Mm. Um, I know Wolfman mentioned on the stream when I was rewatching it. And he said, well, this is the same thing that happened in 2017. DK had been playing Scout the whole tournament, then he switched to Commander for finals. Maybe this was all part of the plan from the beginning. Uh, it really was not. In 2017 or 2019, it was not part of the plan for me to switch off of those positions. It just came to be later in the tournament. Uh, something was not going right with the team. We needed to make some kind of adjustment. That seemed like an obvious one to try to mm. make. And it did seem to work. It's a ballsy thing to do like that deep into a tournament, too, because... You get a you get a rhythm going for whatever position you would expect it to play, and to get moved to something else, uh, especially you know, I guess all all the positions have the nuances, but to go from heavy to commander, like your whole mindset has to change. So, yeah, mm. fortunately, I've played a tournament or two That's in true. my day, yeah. and been around the block. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> I'm all DK. <laughs> <laughs> and Odin mentioned that he really enjoyed playing heavy in this arena. Um, I don't blame it. him. Yeah. Uh, it, heavy is quite fun in this arena. It's much more fun than I remember it being in 2013, where I found it to be a very stressful experience. Um, but that's, that's this week it was... I, that resonates with me. It's yeah. definitely a stressful experience. Yeah, heavy is always pretty stressful, especially in my home field. I always feel like there's so much responsibility on my shoulders. And not that I didn't feel that way mm. this week, but I was much more comfortable throughout the week than I anticipated initially being right. at the, the heavy position. Um, but in any case, our new lineup, well, good, obviously, was still no match for Rusty and Brew <laughs> and the rest of the crew. <laughs> So uh, we played them closely in the first game, but they raffle stomped us in the second <laughs> game. Got the got the elim, sent us back to the losers bracket where we belong, <laughs> and uh, yeah, things kind of went from there. But right. obviously, great match from from them, and I'm just glad that we were able to hang with them competitively in in one game. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of that became our goal as well. Well, one of our goals, I guess, um, was to not die out to some of the better teams and. Um, yeah, so I can kind of relate to that. Um, right, so the next uh, the next matchup from that one was uh, some old foes. Yeah, um, <laughs> Super Q's and St. George. Uh, that was an interesting match. That could have gone either way. Yeah, that was another one where, again, so much of it had to do with stylistic matchups. And St. George had made another kind of lineup alteration where they were keeping Tandor, Commander, Thunder, Heavy, which I think is a very strong combo for yeah. them. But they had moved Inferno back to ammo and off the wall to, to Medic, moving Ace Knight out to Scout. And I'm not sure that that was really a better lineup mm. for them. I know earlier in the week, it seemed that they had been doing, they had been scoring more net points when they put Inferno at Commander, Thunder at Heavy, Tandor at Scout. I had a suspicion when they got to finals that they might move Tandor to Commander just to get that little bit of extra firepower mm. on their front line. And that I think might have been a good adjustment, but. Because they changed so many other things in the team, I think a couple of things just weren't clicking quite as well as they had mm. earlier on. So that may have been part of the problem. They're not here to discuss it with me, so maybe <laughs> we'll have a have a debrief with Thunder at some point and yeah. get his analysis on that. But Syracuse really pulled together as they had done when their backs were against the wall. Beans... I don't want to say backpack because I don't want to say the other people on Steam didn't contribute, but Beans definitely put up some big scores yeah. in those games and, and definitely helped lead his team to victory. I think he got 12 meta kits in one game. Wow. Them from a yeah, he definitely did. I, I remember seeing the live commentary for that and just off the wall was getting bounced, well, off the walls <laughs> uh, in several places in the arena. And Beans was just always there, constantly getting in the back door. They were really having to call... Thunder and Tandor back a lot to deal with him. Yeah. And it just freed up so much pressure on Syracuse to set up in different places upstairs, which, as most teams found throughout the week, really was the whole key to the field, was being able to take strategic positions. Yeah, you had to basically control the, the, the two-thirds of upstairs um, to get ascendancy on the other teams. Um, I think the other thing that helps Syracuse um, is the fact that they've played this arena quite a few times. Um, and that was why I had initially picked them to, mm. to be kind of in that higher tier. I mean, lo and behold, the two teams that I thought were going to be in sort of that second tier behind the two lead teams end up facing each other in the loser's bracket in the mm. tournaments. That should tell you something about how, how close a lot of these teams were. Um, yeah. 
Um, but Syracuse did end up winning that match 4-2. Um, mm. I think their margin of victory was pretty significant. Did they did they have an elimination in that game where the, the first game where, where Beans got all those medic hits? I'm pretty sure they did, that they had won the first match so decisively that it would have been very difficult for them to lose the, the uh, second. Yeah, yeah, so it was it was really kind of over for all intents and purposes after the first game as long as Syracuse managed to stave off the elimination. Mm. And they definitely did. They controlled the field equally well in the second game. St. George won it on points, but not nearly by enough. I mean, they would need to clear like that up. 300 points in it. Like, yeah, so yeah. Syracuse just kind of held them off, made sure that they weren't going to get killed out. It's not to say they walled or anything like that, but they yeah. just, just handled business and said, let's not get eliminated. Yeah. So St. George, shockingly, out in in sixth place. Mm. I mean, again, tied for fifth, sixth, whatever, whatever you want to say, because we didn't have a consolation game, anything like that. Yeah. But because they had gotten bounced to the losers bracket previously, I guess by the technical letter of the law, they were they were sixth in that case. But right. again, went out the same round that that we did. So, um, yeah. Well, on that, yeah. <laughs> The next match was uh, you guys versus Detroit B. Yeah, this or, one was a was a heartbreaker in a lot of different ways. Um, the The score difference was razor thin. We played them super close both games. Jer Bear and I had an absolute epic um, just death match trying to control different areas of the field. One of us would try to take tower, then the other one would would boot somebody else. Uh, yeah, Morris is very kindly reminding me that the difference in the match was 520, which I will note is significantly more than 59 points. So we, we you know, we wanted to open up the margin a little bit from how we'd done against uh, against St. George. For sure. Um, yeah. But we, we Jeremy and I had an epic battle, and the the thing was is that neither of us were really putting up real big scores. Both of us were just kind of trying to hold the other one off. And mm. the the second game that we played. Neither of us even got to three nukes. And after the, the game, Jerry and I kind of came to each other like, did you only have two nukes? Yeah, only two nukes. Man, we're trash, bro. <laughs> we, should, we shouldn't even be playing Commander. Yeah, loser bracket. But it was really a whole team effort on both fronts. Both teams played incredibly well. And just a couple of shots going differently here or there. Um, we did, unfortunately, have a couple penalties stick on us related to dangerous play. Um, mm. But... They also had a couple penalties on Shield stick for them. So I think in the end, it kind of evened out. Yeah. And it always sucks to lose on penalties. But my thinking was, is that you have to take risks in finals. And in order to beat them, I wanted to make sure that we actually beat them, beat them <laughs> at that point. We, they well, did, They then. just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just, just some light bludgeoning and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, but we, we played them super close. But the fact is, even if it was a very, very small margin, they outplayed us. They deserved the win. We ended up going out in fifth place, which I remember saying before the tournament started, I would be disappointed if we finished lower than fifth. Mm. I would have liked to have finished higher than that, but I can't say I'm disappointed. I'm really proud of my team because we definitely faced a moment, I think on day three, where it seemed like things were kind of going downhill, things mm. weren't really clicking, and I had some real concerns that we might get bounced out in like 6th or 7th or yeah. something like that. So the fact that we pulled together, won that match against St. George last night, and then at least made it very, very competitive with Detroit B. I can't say I have a lot of regrets from that. Mm. Although Jer Bear is still my white whale. I'll get you one of these days, Jer Bear. <laughs> That's a great match to watch, too. Like, Yeah, it was so, so close. Yeah, um, and and to be honest, um, I felt even better about it after the fact, given how Detroit B continued to do after that, which I, I guess we'll we'll get to here momentarily. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, on that, like we felt the same way because you know we yeah. felt that we played relatively well against them, and they yeah they just continued to impress throughout the um throughout the finals. Um, match eleven uh, ended up being Brisbane versus Detroit A, which was. The, the first <laughs> the first meeting uh, of an epic series. This is the one people were waiting for. Yeah. And unsurprisingly, I got called in to ref the Detroit B team, uh, other than Jer Bear, was, 
I don't want to say vetoed, but kind of politely asked not to ref. I think just so there couldn't have been any kind of accusations of conflict of interest yeah. or anything like that. Which is I think understandable. Just in terms of best practices, probably yeah. a good way to go when you're running a tournament like this. I will say um, for, for next year, something I mentioned before we started casting, is that I think when we're making the schedule next time around, we do need to block off time for a, a proper lunch break on the finals day. Yeah. Because teams are getting pulled in for refing at different times, you don't know when different teams are going to have to go in. You can't really necessarily plan your meals accordingly. Some players ended up very, very hungry, especially people who got called in for refing yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry now. It's been a little... Uh, it's mostly been snacks all day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so we're definitely looking forward to, to dinner. But in any case, got pulled in to ref that one. And it did not disappoint as a match, even though Detroit had kind of handled Brisbane uh, pretty thoroughly in the round play. This was a different story. Mm. Brisbane applied a lot of the lessons that they'd been learning over the course of the week. And in game one, Detroit A managed to build up a fairly comfortable lead. I think yeah. that it was about 6,500 yeah. after, after game one. But going into game two, Brisbane very nearly reversed that tide. They yeah. kind of got Detroit on the back foot. They were up against the ropes, but couldn't quite get over it. So it was a split match. It was a 4-2, but Detroit A did end up ascending to basically book their ticket to the grand final, and yeah. Brisbane would have to uh, would have to fight their way back into the winner's bracket. So that, that was kind of what we expected going into the finals, I think. I mean, when you take I a certainly team, did. Yeah, when you take a team that hadn't lost the game, or, yeah, hadn't lost the game all week. Yeah. Um, you would expect them to, to handle their business like they did during the round. So, um, yep. for the most part, they did. Uh, but it was good to see Brisbane take some points off them. And First blood was drawn. Yeah, yeah. You know, prove gods can not bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you don't want to, you never want to see a team go totally undefeated in a tournament. That's that, right. that would be, just be boring. That'd be terrible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then then <laughs> fl flipping back to now the, the match for fourth place, Detroit B and Sewer Cues. Again, much like our match, this was incredibly hard fought. Detroit B did manage to take both games um, by fairly small margins, about mm. 3K a piece. But again, a couple of things shift over. A nuke run goes differently. Somebody forgets a base or something like that, and that could have gone totally different at that point. So seeing how well Syracuse had done to come back all the way through the, the loser bracket after they'd had a lower seed, to see how well we had played Detroit against them, um, I felt a lot better about losing Detroit when I saw how thoroughly they were handling their, their business. So. Yeah, I was expecting Syracuse to, to not really struggle too much with them. And not only did they struggle, they you know, lost the match. So I, I really didn't own. know what to expect going, going into that match. I could honestly see it going either way. That, that again, is why I, I had a, such a hard time making a call as to where to rank a lot of those kind of middle teams. And... I think at least in the broad strokes, I, I kind of had the right idea for the outline of where I thought different teams fit in. Um, yeah, Detroit B would probably just the outlier. Yeah, but although I put them in the same kind of category with, with us and, and Leblin, maybe a step behind Syracuse and yeah. St. George, but that was just because I really wasn't all that familiar with them. Yeah. But they they played a, a fantastic tournament. Yeah, they, they, they handled their business Jay Bear again. played fantastically. I love Jerry Bear, man. He's a, he's a great player. He's a great dude, very level-headed, uh, wonderful leader for, for Detroit B. Yeah, so. sure. And Terrell. Oh. oh, man, that guy. That dude. He, just, he, can, he can play. Yeah, he, is, he, can play. he is always there. He's always where you don't want him to be. Absolutely, which he is everywhere. Is, yeah, <laughs> he is very frustrating to try to break through against. And really, I think the unsung hero of this match was D-Rock. D Rock came yeah. up big with like almost an 8K, I think, yeah. in the, the second game and really sort of decisively gave it to him, even after Beans and Sanchez, I think, had kind of outperformed their, their counterparts. But yeah. D Rock was on fire. I think that was probably his best score of the tournament, and he peaked at exactly the right time. For sure. And Spooky, too, was no slouch. I mean, Spooky's taken some shit this week for copping a fairly hefty number of shielding yeah. penalties. But I will just say, as a, a scout who is a constant thorn in three-hit side and is always in annoying parts of the maze that you have to capture but can't get past him, Spooky was great at that role yeah, all sure. week. He yeah. was a real handful of deal. I can't tell you how many times I thought our corner was clear, and then he just puts back two or back. three on my back. Yeah. Ugh, it was, it was a nightmare. So He, um, he played really good, I, I think. 
yeah, he needs to clean up his game because going forward, I think once you get that kind of stigma attached to you, it's it's a little hard to shake it. And, and I know that he did feel kind of badly about that because he thought that he was taking steps to remedy it. And in some of the areas where he had been called for problematic shield before, like the back corner, he was playing a lot cleaner. Right. It was just sometimes operating in areas he was a little bit more unfamiliar with. He was still Perfect. kind of leading with the gun. But he was applying lessons to particular places in the maze so hopefully he'll continue to adapt that just kind of work on his style not leading with the gun because mm. i think he has a lot of potential to be a really successful scout oh absolutely yeah and um, and, and certainly um shayla and tilt did a great job on, on reset because i very rarely saw them even yeah. times when i break in they just fucked off and went somewhere else <laughs> and i was like oh well i okay. guess i'm not getting medicates <laughs> um so the next match from there, well, that that essentially meant that uh, Syracuse were, uh, well, Syracuse fourth. dropped out at four. Yep. So they they took fourth place. So they were top four, as I kind of predicted yeah. at the the start of the week. Again, they had ascended up through the the ranks after round play. They had a few stumbles here and there, but I think they pulled together at the right time. But Detroit B was just on a hot streak. They yeah. could not be stopped. They were there to prove that. It was every bit as much their field as it was Detroit A's. Yep. So they well, were on a mission. They took that mentality into the next game when they went up against Brisbane. Um, yeah, which again in the in the very first match was close. It was super close, and super I was thinking close. to myself, I was like, "Oh my God, Detroit B, they might actually they might be able to, to take the these guys. Yeah, yeah. We could have an all Detroit finals here, which would have been pretty cool. It would have been cool. It would have been." absurd to see brisbane locked out of the finals yeah. i mean <laughs> it's been probably decades since that's happened yeah i think so um but they their first game they they played so well and, yeah um, they were really clicking on on all cylinders and i remember refing that game and several times rusty just coming around with an exasperated look on his face saying oh i, I, I can't break in <laughs> oh they're just keeping me out baden can you please deal with terrell yeah, yeah. um but then in game two, you know, the class and the experience of Brisbane really shot through and they just handled their business. Much like the second game in our match against Brisbane, Brisbane came out and raffle stomped them. Oh, who was that that was probably the biggest margin in the final in fact, yeah, I think it was the biggest margin in the final series. So Yeah. Yeah. Almost it, almost thirty grand. So Brisbane said, nah, we're not getting locked out of the finals. <laughs> we're here to remind y'all that we've been doing this a time or two, and we came here to play. Yeah, exactly right. So that meant that Detroit B um, claimed a very well-deserved third spot. Yeah, absolutely. So, I was so impressed with them through, throughout the week. Mad shout-outs to you boys. You guys thoroughly earned that spot. And um, and Lady. Don't forget Shayla. Oh, and I use guys. Kiwis use guys in the... Uh, <laughs> The asexual way. <laughs> yeah, Californians do too, but you know, yeah, we, for, for, for people who live outside of those areas, didn't want to think that we're being exclusive here. That's right, yeah. We, we're not we're non-binary on this podcast. We are all inclusive <laughs> That's right. on the resup. Man. Um, so yeah, that took us to the finals. Yeah, so Oof. now we have the, the rematch everybody was waiting for to see whether or not, well, Brisbane drew a little bit of blood in that first match. Could they finally sort of apply those, those lessons they had before? Unsurprisingly, the margins were very close, very, really close. very close. Even closer than they had been the last two, the last time these teams met. Yeah. Well, actually, not not in terms of points. Now that I'm relooking at it, the margins were were pretty similar at that point. Under three grand yeah. in both games, and that's not per game. That's in the match yeah. total. It's crazy. Um, it it goes to show the quality of uh, the players on both sides. But I mean, I'm very, you know, pretty familiar with the guys from Brisbane. Mm -hmm. uh, again, are you guys? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can never really count them out. You know, no. going into the game, I was like, okay, cool. We're going to have these two games. Then we're going to get to go home. Wasn't yeah, always dangerous <laughs> thinking that. Much like in 2017, uh, that was not all she wrote because Brisbane managed to pull out that narrow win, so we'd have to go to another match at the end. And I shit you not, I saw fear in the Detroit players' eyes yep. when, when they came out, when they were looking at the scoreboard, they were kind of talking things over. They were like, oh, God, is it going to happen again? Yeah. Is Brisbane going to come all the way back? And it, again, was why... No shade to Detroit. This earlier in the week, I'm like, I can't pick against Brisbane. Yes, they right. have too much of an established history. Yeah. Um. Le or later in the the week, I was thinking, oh, well, Detroit A might just romp all the way through the finals, but that seemed 
obviously not to be the case that Brisbane had figured something out. Maybe they hadn't figured them out, but they were at least playing them a lot closer. I think um, they started to click with adding Baden into the, into the lineup. Um, and so him and Rusty were able to gel a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that, that really that really helped. Yeah, when you have <laughs> when you have both Howe brothers coming at you, there there's just not a lot you can do. But yeah. it helps when you have Scythe and Micro to, to push them back because Ooh. God, those four three hits in the same maze, that that just collection of talent is insane. It's ridiculous. I, I don't think I've ever seen a finals match that is that loaded from top to bottom. Yeah. And I'm gonna throw my my own experience in the twenty seventeen finals against them. In there, Detroit A is was a much more skilled team than we were in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Then they so after an epic, an epic battle, uh, your boys out of Detroit managed to take the win, and um, it was a pretty magical thing to watch. Be a part of that game because the boys, it, it's it's always. I don't know if I don't know if it's Brisbane ever get complacent about being you know winners of these tournaments or what or if they if it's lost on them but it certainly wasn't lost on the Detroit boys those boys started celebrating straight away it took me back yeah to back in two thousand eight yeah I can I can imagine yeah um, yeah it's a it's a feeling I'd like to have again one day <laughs> you and me both buddy <laughs> it's a cause yeah it it was it was really special to see um, like I'd said as the week started. Josh, a lot of times, has a kind of nonchalant attitude. Seems like nothing's bothering him. But I know he was very intense going to that finals match. And as soon as they got that indication at the end from their suits that your team came first, mm. I just heard a big, yes, yes. And there was clapping. Yeah. There was hugging. There was a lot of Boys, high-fiving. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. There was there was definitely some emotion in the air. Yeah. Some uh, some tears were shed for one reason or another. I won't, yeah. I won't call anybody out. But it's nothing to be ashamed of, man. No, no. It, I know, had it, had it been me, if we had managed to pull out that win in 2017, I'd have been a wreck on yeah. the floor. <laughs> I would have been in just a big, soaking fireball mess. There's <laughs> some fireball tears. <laughs> Indeed. They're, they're very spicy. Yeah. Don't want to shed too many of them. Um, and massive, massive props to Brisbane for pushing Detroit as well as you did. Because, yeah, like, I, like I said before, I was expecting... I don't know why. I was expecting the the first match to just be over and then we'd be, you know, celebrating the end of nationals. But um, yeah, they they weren't having it. They weren't going out without a fight. So. Yeah. So yeah, great job to to both teams in finals. It was a real. It was a treat and a pleasure to to watch from inside the arena. Um, refing is always a little bit stressful especially when you're the head ref and it's the grand final and you want to make sure you don't miss anything yeah. but just seeing two teams of that caliber go in there it it's was a pretty clean it game. was it was an it, it was very clean it yeah. was very clean and the the two teams weren't really barking at each other about accusations of things going focused. here and there they yeah they were focused they wanted to go in and, and handle business so mm-hmm. big congratulations to both of those teams but especially to detroit a for Finally taken down the the Kings. It, yep. it rarely happens, but you know there, no no team is invincible, and all runs end at some time or another. So big, right. big congratulations to them. Dynasty's and big over. that dynasty is over. Better watch out. <laughs> next year the Auckland dynasty begins, True right? Story. Oh, except America is going to win that next time. I, I, I want so. that belt. I want the championship belt. He does want that belt. Wolfman, uh, I'm coming for you, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost had to bash Micro with a steel chair so that way I could steal the belt <laughs> from him. But hey, the night is young. You know what? You never know what's going to happen when I have some fireball. Oh, I hope that belt makes its way to the bar. Surely they're gonna wear it around. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. We'll take some photos and, and put them up. a big thank you also to everybody who volunteered their time and refed the the last two or three matches. I know a lot of the refs that I pulled in had to ref essentially six consecutive games, and that does get to be a drag on you. I was yeah. looking for the most experienced people, and everybody who came in was great about it. Was very gracious about accepting their spots and yeah. handling things in a professional manner, making th- sure things were noted. So big thank you to everybody who, who ref the end of that tournament. Yeah. Well done people. Well, look, um, did you have any final thoughts? Let's go get drunk, Steve. Yeah. Keen. Keen as a bean to go out and get some food. Actually. I'm yeah. Hungry. We'll, we'll do a, a final debrief probably, uh, once we make it back to our respective homes, um, whether or not there are any more recordings here all together in the flesh, I don't know, but it's been, it's been a pleasure being your live 
resupply partner again, Steve. Oh, man, it's good to have you back on the mic. I miss you the last two days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, man? Um, but yeah, like, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, we, we might take a, a short recess after Nationals, and then we'll um, we'll get back into it. I don't think it'll be as long as it was when me and Than stopped. I think we stopped for, like, six months. Um it was a painful time. It was. It was. <laughs> we, we went dark on the pod, but I think... There was no sp- podcast. There was no lasers in Sacramento. <laughs> it was a dark time, ladies and gentlemen. People, uh, people uh, you know, have been coming out to us and, and been saying that they're digging it, so... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and final note, uh, most of the Sacramento people are going to be hanging around at uh, Revolutions tomorrow from about 12 till about 5 when I take some people to the airport. Since we don't have a center, we're keen to play some more laser force. So if anybody wants to come down, play some socials. If we get enough, uh, we can play some Space Marines. Jesse said we can do $15 wristbands again. Cool. And even after I finish the airport run, I'll probably come back and still play some more games. <laughs> I'll not leave until Sunday morning. So hope yeah, to see cool. everybody tomorrow, assuming I'm not nursing the world's biggest hangover. I mean, and if, if you're super keen, a bunch of us are going to be in Syracuse tomorrow night playing. So... Uh, if you're not if you're not still in Detroit, swing into um, into Syracuse and we'll play some games out there. Again, I need to remind you, Steve, that is not three towns over. <laughs> That's like a seven hour drive. <laughs> well, look, um, we'll probably leave it there because uh, we need to we need to get gone. But um, time for drinks. <laughs> it's, it's been a very uh, good tournament. I've enjoyed the week. Um, it's good to see my buddy again. Yeah, right um, back at you, man. All right, well. For the last time for this Nationals, I've been Guy Next Door. And I've been Fireball DK. Always remember to backtrack, kids. We will see you next year. (laughs) And next time. Next time, yeah.